In these problems, we're finding other derivatives, multiple derivatives of functions. So second derivatives, maybe fourth derivatives, maybe 23rd derivatives. The basic idea here is that if you take the derivative of something, okay, that's fine, but you could go ahead and take the derivative of the derivative, and that will give you the second derivative. And we don't just do that because it's um, a fun way to spend our time. Uh, second derivatives or even further multiple derivatives can have some very specific meanings. For example, if you have a function that shows position, maybe of a cannonball you're shooting, okay? So the cannon's right here, it shoots up in the air and falls to the ground. So this graph represents the position of the cannonball. Well, the derivative of the function that describes this graph would give you not the position but the velocity. And the second derivative would actually give you the acceleration. And the third and fourth derivatives have some meaning in this context too. So, and there are other situations uh, where uh, multiple derivatives can have some real meaning. In these problems, we're just going to practice doing them. And the method is pretty simple. You're just going to apply the, pro the, the power rule twice. So here's why. If we want to find y double prime, and that represents the second derivative, we'll find the first derivative, and then we'll take the derivative of that. So let's find y prime first. So we're just going to apply the power rule here. So this will be 4 times 1 eighth times x to the third minus 3 times 1 third x squared plus 2 times 3 fourths x minus 3. And we can simplify this a little bit. So that's 1 half x cubed minus x squared plus 3 halves x minus 3. So there's y prime, or the first derivative. Now we'll apply the power rule again to get the second derivative. So this is going to be 3 halves x squared minus 2x plus 3 halves. And of course the 3 disappears there. Actually that's kind of the nice thing. As you take multiple derivatives, your terms, um, the last term always drops off every time you take one. So if you're going to multiple derivatives, it ends up getting smaller and smaller, at least with polynomials here. But this is our second derivative of y. All right, let's take a look at another one. Now this one involves a quotient, so we're going to have to apply the quotient rule, which can get a little bit complicated. So we're going to have to keep our eyes out for ways to simplify this as we go along. But let's give it a shot. And remember the quotient rule is low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So low is 5x minus 2, d high is 2 minus high, and d low, the derivative of the chunk on the bottom here, is just 5. And that's all over low squared, so 5x minus 2 quantity squared. And then let's uh, go ahead and put the 2 through here and see if, how this simplifies. We would get 10x minus 4, and that's a minus 10x. Aha! So you can see here the 10x's are going to add together to 0 because we've got a 10x and a negative 10x. So this goes away, this goes away, and this is our first derivative. So this is f prime of x. Now to find our second derivative, we're going to go ahead and apply the, the quotient rule again. We'll do that over here. So f double prime of x equals low, that's 5x minus 2 quantity squared, and d high, the derivative of what's on the top here, minus 4, is actually 0, because the derivative of any constant is 0. So that part's going to go away. That's kind of good news. And then low, uh, sorry, and then high d low. And here's where you might have a little bit of trouble. High is negative 4, so minus a negative 4. I'm going to run out of room here. And what's the derivative of this chunk on the bottom? 5x minus 2 squared. If you have not seen the, the chain rule yet, you probably would multiply this out, uh, just foil it out, and then apply the power rule. I'm going to use the chain rule, and the way this works, if you haven't seen it, is that you find something that you want to substitute in and call u. So I'm going to say u is 5x minus 2, and then we also find the derivative of this chunk, the du dx, and that is, in this case, 5. Now, we substitute in. Instead of 5x minus 2 squared, we call this u squared. And we're going to take our derivative of that. We're going to apply the power rule. And that is going to be 2u to the first, but we have to multiply it by du dx. That's what the chain rule says. 
So 2u times du dx is our answer here, and we simply substitute back in these pieces. So 2 times 5x minus 2 times 5. And that's what goes up there. Let's see, that's 10 times... So this is actually going to be 40 times, and I'm, I am running out of room here, uh, 5x minus 2. Let's see if I can squeeze that in. And that's all over low squared, so 5x minus 2 quantity. And be careful, this is squared to start, so when we square that, it goes up to the fourth power. Now, to simplify this, well, this chunk disappears because it's multiplied by 0, so that's nice. Nice. And here we have a factor of 5x plus 2. And here we have 4, sorry, 5x minus 2. And here we have 4 factors of 5x minus 2. So we can rewrite this as, and that's a negative, negative 40. So it's a positive 40 over 5x minus 2 to the third power. And that is our f double prime of x. All right, let's try one more. So here, and this looks maybe a little strange, it says find f, and then you have in Roman numerals 23 up there. That's the 23rd derivative of f of x. And f of x is the sine of x. And you might at first say, that's ridiculous. I have to go ahead and take the derivative of this 23 times. But you don't, actually. What you need to know is that there's a pattern involving the, these two trig functions, sine and cosine. So if f of x is sine of x, f of the first derivative, I'm going to say f prime of x, is cosine x. f double prime, the second derivative of x, while the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. And then f triple prime of x is, that would be negative cosine x because the derivative of sine x is cosine and we have a negative sign in front of it. And then finally, this is all the further we're going to have to go, f quadruple prime of x, the, the fourth derivative, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but we already have a negative sign, so this becomes sine x, and aha, we're back to where we started, and this pattern is going to repeat itself. First derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, fifth derivative, sixth derivative, seventh derivative, etc. So, in solving this one, what I'd probably do is look for the nearest factor of 4. So this is 23, nearest factor of 4 is 20. So this would be the 20th derivative. If I wanted to find 21st, I'd start back up here. 22nd, 23rd. So the, fifth, so the 23rd derivative of sine of x is negative cosine of x. So that's a little bit of work with multiple derivatives. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.